Yo, what's going on guys? This is Brent again and this is tutorial number 14 and in this tutorial we're going to talk about Connect Mongo and how to use persistent session storage. So what is persistent session storage? Well, let me show you. If we go ahead and log in with our account, we're playing on the, whatever web app that you've developed or whatever. Uh, and then say the developer, or maybe us, we kill the server, okay? So we're going to stop the server and then we're going to restart it. And then our user is, um, you know, comes back from lunch break or whatever. They refresh the page and they're like, what the heck? I'm logged out. Um, so what we want to do is save their session storage uh, in a database rather than what we're doing currently. Um, if we go to uh, our server.js, uh, we're using uh, connect session right now. And it is basically just saving to our server's RAM memory uh, all the session data. This was never meant to be used in development, and it was always meant to use some sort of uh, persistent storage. We haven't been using it for uh, testing purposes up until this point, and now we're going to talk about how to save those sessions to permanent storage uh, so that our users never have to worry about continually logging in and out anytime we adjust our server. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and install connect mongo using npm. Uh, so in your command line, I want you to type in npm install connect mongo and save and then you'll hit enter and install. Uh, it takes just a little bit. I've already done it. So go ahead and do that now. So now that we have it installed, let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation first this time. So I want you to go to the GitHub and go to connect mongo and then scroll down and we can see usage okay so here's some uh code for how we're going to use it um so let's just go ahead and copy this paste it into our server.js luckily we've already uh, assigned session which up here to express session so we're using the exact same thing that they're using um next let's go to our app.use where we actually use session and add some code so over in our documentation, uh, app.use.session, we see that they add, other than the secret, they add a store option here. So down here under our secret, actually we'll do it after our resave here because we got a couple extra options that they don't use. Um, we're gonna put in store and then new Mongo store. And then this will be where we put our options. So scrolling down just a little bit, we can see that we can reuse a mongoose connection if we have one in which we already do. So if we look right here um, in server.js, uh, we can see that mongoose.connect.config.db.url. Uh, so that's our connection. So we can reuse that. So let's inside of our options here, we can um, add an object and call it mongoose connection. And then we're just going to give it uh, mongoose.connection. So that's the first one. So before moving on to the next option, let's just go ahead and test this app so far. Uh, save uh, server.js, restart your server. I'm using NodeMon, you should check that out. Um, so we want to log into Facebook. And here we go, we're playing around on the app. Now some admin kills the server. So now the server's down, uh, and then they restart it. And now we can refresh, and we are still in the server, uh, or still in the app. Uh, so we no longer got kicked to the uh, login screen. Uh, let's just, again, refresh, refresh. It's not going anywhere. We are persistently logged in. Okay, so let's check out what got actually saved in our server. Uh, so if we go to our collections and sessions, we'll see a uh, new session that's been stored. It has an ID and a cookie associated with it, and then it has an expiration date on it. By default, um, I believe it's 14 days, so two weeks. Uh, but if we set another option, we can actually change that. So let's do that now. 
So what if your site needs a little bit more security and you don't want them to be persistently logged in without, you know, re-putting in their username or password or signing in with Facebook uh, before 14 days or after or up to 14 days. Uh, so say you only want just like a few hours and then they have to log back in if they're not using it. Uh, so let's scroll down back on um, our GitHub area over here and we'll see session expiration. Now they have another option here called TTL and what TTL is is time to live. Uh, that means that the session will remain persistent in our database for that amount of time. Now it is listed in seconds, okay? So what they're doing here is 60 seconds times 60 minutes for an hour times 24 hours in a day and times 14 days, that is the default. Now we can adjust that. So let's go back to our app here. Um, let's add a new option or section here called TTL. And we're gonna do uh, two days times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds and save that. Now we're going to go to <clears throat> back to our page here, refresh. And now let's go to our uh, session here. And you'll see now it's a uh, four and four and today's date is two two. So that is exactly two days uh, from today. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit more about what is actually going on here. Do you remember in our passport.js file, we put a serialized user and deserialized user? And I mentioned that we didn't want to save all the user's data in session. All we needed was their user.id. Well, this is where that comes into play. We are saving the user ID into session data. And I can show you um, uh, with this little middleware function here, um, we're going to request, uh, we're going to output the request.session and then we're going to output uh, the request.user. And I'm going to show you what is ex exactly involved in those. So let's go ahead and all we actually have to do is refresh this page. And this portion right here is the session. This is also what is exactly stored in this session value um, in our database, passport user, and it's got a username or ID. So the user ID exactly matches our, our, our session ID. So user, these numbers are the same. That is how they match up. So when a, a user logs into our website and all it knows is the user ID, how it can go ahead and find our full user uh, in our database. Uh, so that is how sessions work. Um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, if you got any questions, concerns, post them in the comments below. Uh, if you got any uh, constructive criticism, I love to hear it. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and click subscribe. Um, I'm looking forward to building a large community. And so uh, tell me what you think. Catch you guys next time.